Well, thank you so much for having me here. And thank you, Angel, for handling all the artworks and arranging everything. As you know, I have an accent. So if you can't understand something, just say, say it again. And I will try to talk small. But, um, so this is the first time I'm showing works in Florida. And this is actually the first time visiting here. I arrived yesterday. This place is beautiful. I drove to Miami. I was telling I went to the Perez collection and the uh, Red Label. Red oh my god, amazing works here. Okay, so this is kind of like how I grew up. I since I was almost six, my mom put me into traditional Japanese calligraphy class on Saturdays. So every Saturday, I had to go and to learn how to draw or, or write um, calligraphy. So it is a virtue to have a good handwriting. So a lot of the kids in Japan um, go to calligraphy school. So at the calligraphy school, what you do is your teacher gives you the sample of the word practice. So in this slide, the orange one is your teacher's example. So you just spend two hours just copying the same word over and over and over, like 50 sheets of the paper. So this is a little different from um, how we normally make art. But so again, here is an example of a class, um, classroom full of students doing this. It's not about the content, but it's about the line quality that's most important. And I never knew this was really my base for my aesthetics because I didn't go to our art class. It's just my mom sent me to calligraphy class. But I think that this is the way I got my um, preference to black and white works as well. And I decided to go to art college when I was in high school. And for the entrance exam, I had to draw with like Western manner, Sufignato, Kyodoskyo, um, using charcoal. So I had to quit my Saturday calligraphy class. And instead, I started going to Western join the class. So this is not exactly where I was at, but it's something like that. And this bricks, I don't know what the bricks is, but I drew so many of those <laughs> bricks. <laughs> and yeah, so we would just sit in the class and draw this Roman past. But So this is my background. So my background is a mixture of calligraphy aesthetics and I learned how to draw like Western way. And this poster was at art teacher's class classroom in high school. And this I thought was the best art ever out there. Like someday I want to draw like this. And now I'm like maybe I can copy it. Someday I might make kind of variation of it, but um, my favorite artist is Escher. Houston MFAH had a big Escher show. Did anybody go see it? No? Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I booked it the first exhibition day, first time slot. I was like so excited. So I went to um, University of Houston for my BFA and MFA, and 
and my major was painting. So I actually made a pretty couple paintings at the school. But when you go to art school, you're supposed to experiment, to do crazy stuff. I had my pink Converse sneakers <laughs> and tone up you know, jeans, and I was painting, painting. But so it's a year. I was going to get my MFA um, degree in May, so in February, I almost died in medical incident. So after I came out of the hospital, I just didn't want to pain. I said, I'm going to draw for my MFA show, thesis show. So this was the first work I made um, right out of the hospital. and just worked so hard for two months to prepare for this main um, scissors show. So here is another example. And this, this is the first time I think I'm using my cap. But this was the flowers my classmates gave me when I was in hospital. So I wanted to take a photograph and make a drawing. And in the beginning, of the drawing I started to do, the background was kept white because in calligraphy you have to make sure the paper is clean, no drippings of the uh, ink, no finger smudges. You have to keep the white space. That's where the energy or chi falls. This is my daughter. And I worked from photographs. I would take a photograph and work from that. And after that, I went different direction. But, so I started making small ink drawings. And I started to have these ropes. As you see in the gallery, most of the works has ropes in it, which is um, Japanese proverb. But so, this series I worked on, I titled this series as Midnight Skinny Dipping. <laughs> because I would stay up in the, in the night and I would make a drawing. So it's like my subconscious, you know, leaves your body, goes into this, you know, diving into, you know, myself is diving into subconscious, kind of finding what's there. But to ensure I can come back to my body, this rope was like my lifeline that's connected to me. So that's how the rope started. And then I met Dr. Abush. So I used to work at a local community college by our house in Texas. And so I think with the community college is many like retired adults, they have come take classes. So he's a surgeon, retired surgeon. He was taking painting class and his paintings were the, the Muslim um, calligraphy. So the writing was art, kind of like Japanese ink calligraphy is art. So I kind of wanted to incorporate that. This is one of the works Dr. Iza gave to me. And the funny thing is I can't read this as a language. So for me, it's just the squiggles and smiles with dots, the eyes. So, you know, my works also must be appear like that if you don't read it. And I was also looking up this as a reference. So this is the first one I made of just wall. So in the beginning, my works were really more simple, just the calligraphy. This work for seasons. Um, the one very right is the spring, spring, the summer, autumn, and the fall. So spring, this is about relationship, like boy and girl relationship. So spring one, it's like, oh my God, I just met this boy, and like, oh my God, 
what's going to happen in this second one summer is all the proverbs, like four proverbs in, like how passionate you are, you're like from like in danger, but I don't care. And this uh, autumn one is like on your this doesn't work. Like all the, again, groups of proverbs, like that explain the state of the relationship. And the last one um, is winter, and it has only two proverbs next to each other. I kind of want it to be like two people standing. And this uh, calligraphy on the right in the winter says, um, spill the water, you can't cry over spill the water. And this other one says, alcohol is the best medicine of all. <laughs> <laughs> And I also created some works of my own poetry, which I turned into calligraphy. And as you see in there too, this is when I was connecting all the characters. So Japanese writing is from top right to bottom next that way, and to the left bottom. So this one you can really see clearly there is only one entrance on the top right and it is on the left bottom. So this is kind of like a metaphor of life, how we are here physically, we go through all the complicated life and it exists in the end. So yeah, I was playing with that. And again, this um, for you, it's just squiggles, right? But I'm also trying to make sure the line quality is interesting enough to look at. It's kind of like listening to foreign music. Like you don't understand the exact lyric, but you can still enjoy the reason of it. And then I started playing with the background. I kind of went into not leaving the background too light. And I had a short time, so I made this. Um, so this one is love and hate, but two emotions that's like flip side of the coin, that's what you say. Um, so I would put two Chinese characters together on top of each other, and I would intertwine them. So there is no entrance to exit, but it's all connected to one line. That's it, all together. Is it thunder? Yeah. <laughs> and then I started the kind of missing drawing from photograph. Like, so this one, at the first, I did not have the figure. But I was like, I'm going to go back to doing more figurative work. So I decided to put my husband in there. I'm like, Caesar um, proverb is people take stupidity to take breaks. And I used to play with this game in Japan. So, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So there's 101 um, poets, one poem with poet um, drawn on it. So I'm kind of following that. So I have this imagery on the bottom and this proverb on the top. And also I'm playing more with the background. I was talking to someone about this piece. So my works are really like about me, my family, my daily life. Like when I was in grad school, like I felt like I had to have like a really cool concept here, but I just didn't have that. Like all I wanted to do, like draw or something, just my truth, like no coolness or anything. But anyways, this is my cat that disappeared. And we think she got eaten by Kayate, but we don't know. But, you know, it's like she just disappeared into life. And 
Islam is starting to play with grid or taking the images apart. Like I was starting to be interested in this idea that we are all made of atoms, like this is tiny atoms and put together, and we are really not that solid. And this piece, I, I do make this uh, grid piece with no calligraphy. So those are kind of like my um, recalibration, kind of within my eyes and how to recalibrate. And also to, like when you look at the artwork, first thing people think of people you want to say is, what is this? So when you say, oh, it's a cat, then you go to the next word. I kind of wanted to stop with that and it really shows the beauty of graphite. Like graphite can make, it is either 10H to 10B, but within that, like you can seriously make beautiful things. And with this, I kind of wanted viewers to see that each circle, just as a tonality of the graphite. This is my two cats playing next to each other. Um, so, bubbles. So, again, like I mentioned, I'm interested in the idea, everything. It's just a bunch of atoms, and the atoms are constantly moving, nothing is still. So, I kind of wanted to show that this is like the first work I started to put this uh, bubbling. And this work is in pulsating still life composition green. So one question I get sometimes is why do you not use colors? So I was like, okay, let me challenge that. So I made this still life all composed in green objects. And I made this drawing using graphite and see how if it's still as good as, you know, not the have to green. And again, still life is not still. It's pulsating, all the atoms are moving, nothing is still. Same with orange. And this work on display, so I had another health scare recently. Uh, this is 2021. So when I came out of the hospital, I wanted to make the same drawing I did back in 2007, the same pose. So that's why it's about it too. And this is my babies. I draw my cats um, because that's what I love. And um, apologetically, I draw because I can and I want to. Like, you know, once you know you're gonna die sooner or later, like, you got me what you wanna do. Like, don't pay attention to who oh, is so cool, is art thing. Or, like, don't worry. Like, when you die, you casket, you don't wanna be like, Screaming like, oh, I should have done this. I want to do this. Like I tell this to students, I used to wear work at college. Like, do what you want to do. And also the thing with cats. So, does anyone know Eckhart Tolle? Yeah, right. So you know what he says about the cats. So he just said, I believe the with several Zen masters, all of them. Yeah. I mean, they can really teach you a lot of those things. And, okay, it was supposed to be 20 minutes, so yeah. Okay.